hello viewers so i am back with my new video on uae sst for grade 8 west african islamic civilization so viewers here we have the learning objectives to describe the ancient kingdoms of mali islamic cities and civilizations in west africa to analyze the contributions of ancient African kingdoms to human history, UAE link. UAE is an Islamic country, as we all know. In fact, the origin of Islam is in the region of Saudi Arabia, the next door neighbor of UAE. The CC link, it is linked with theology. Why? Because theology is the study of religion. And here we are seeing the spread of Islam in Africa. Now, before I move on further with my video, a humble request for all those who are watching my video and haven't subscribed as yet. So, please do subscribe to my video. My channel's name is Learn SST. And please press the bell icon and give me a like. Please share it with your friends if you really like my videos. So, now I proceed further. Now here we have a warm up question from the textbook. You can go through the question and see the answer over here. The spread of Islam in Africa from the period 715 to 1500 CE. Islam spread in Africa in several phases of development. It spread to Egypt and North Africa from 685 CE to 715 CE. It spread across the Sahara to Sahel. Islam spread through the West African states and East Africa through merchant contacts and long distance caravan routes to Arab Muslim cities of Northern Africa. Now what you can see over here is the small pictures which I have put just to give you a glimpse of how the people uh, were interacting, how the merchants brought about um, the spread of Islam, not consciously but subconsciously. So it was the intermingling of the traders and that brought about the spread of Islam. So what you can see over here is the map of Africa. You can see the green shaded region. This particular region is called as the Islamic Rim. Rim is a border. So you can see the entire circular kind, more or less like a circular region or it should be an oval region which you can find. And then you can also find that green shaded region in the Horn of Africa. So all these green shaded regions are the regions wherein you have the majority of Muslim population. Now besides that rim, in between the rim, you have the light uh, shaded region. And this region shows you that the Muslim population is quite thin. That means the sparsely populated regions of Algeria, uh, Libya, Chad, uh, Mauritania and so on. Then when we proceed a little further from that green rim of Islamic rim, when we come down, we can see that pink portion. Now that pink portion is the portion wherein there are always conflicts. And this is the conflict between the two communities, that is the Muslims and the Christians. Then when we proceed a little below, that is the South African continent. And the South African continent has got the majority of the population following Christianity. You just can see some patches over here and there in South Africa. Now those are the patches as the index shows over here. The white patches shows you the minority Christian uh, populated regions. You can still find some pink portion in South Africa some green portion over there so accordingly you can see over here in the index now once when you have this map and the religious bifurcation kept in mind then obviously the lesson becomes easy for you to understand that how did islam spread from egypt across the north africa 
Sahara, Sahel region and so on. Uh, just the continuation of the lesson. By the 11th century, Islam reached the Senegal coastal region and vast areas of the Sahel across to Sudan. By the late 13th and 14th centuries, well-established cities in Sahel and Mali had large Muslim institutions. When I say institutions, it could be the madrasas, that is the schools and the universities like Sankora. Sankora was a very, very well-known university existing in Africa during those days. Now, cities in the Sahel prospered as West African cities and kingdom prospered from the trade of gold, salt and other metal wares produced in the region. Metal wares are the metal products. So as this land was rich in gold, and uh, salt and different kinds of metal obviously it should be a rich region means the people should be uh, quite uh, wealthy but uh, it's the other way around you will find this continent to be the place wherein maximum population is just uh, living a life of poverty of misery so let me just proceed further now So uh, here we have activity one for very much from your textbook, the 7th and the 8th centuries. During that time, how Egypt and Africa were the regions dominated by Muslim population and the spread of Islam started from the region of Egypt, North Africa in the 8th century to be precise. 685 CE to 715 CE and it spread across the Sahara to the Sahel region. It did not stop over there but it continued further. In the 11th century, Islam reached the region of Senegal and vast areas of the Sahel across to Sudan. When we see the 13th and the 14th century, it was spreading in the well-established cities in the Sahel region and Mali, which had maximum Muslim population and the Muslim institutions over there bear witness to the growing influence of Islam. Here we have the prominent city of Timbuktu. And this Timbuktu was uh, gaining prominence during the time of 15th and 16th century. And the cultural center of Mali and the Sahel region. So this had become a hub. And a hub of what? It had become a hub of cultural and of religious activity. Then it had three great mosques. That is the Jingare Burg the Sankora and the Siddhi Yahya and the Quranic Sankora University. So the mosque is always most of the time it is uh, connected or associated with the Madarsas. So you here you can find the great mosque and along with the mosque you have the schools or the Madarsas attached to it. Then uh, the Timbuktu became wealthy from the gold trade of the 14th century. So you have the people over there from poor, they started becoming rich. But again, let me tell you children, it's not only like um, all the commoners who have become rich. It was the wealthy people and they became filthy rich. Then uh, the Jingare Burg uh, uh, Mosque was originally built in 1327. This building style is typical of the people of Sudan and Sahel of that time. Now, why does the writer say so? If you look at this uh, picture on the right side, from anywhere it doesn't resemble to be a mosque. The mosque which we see in the Gulf countries or the mosque which we have it back home, they actually look like a mosque because they have got the unique features of the mosque, especially the Grand Dome. Then we have the minarets. Uh, maybe it would be a four minarets at the sides 
of the mosque or it would be just two minarets but the minarets would be there when you look at this picture it doesn't resemble any of the features of the original mosque when the people started adopting this religion they did not have much idea about the architectural features of it so slowly and steadily when they started learning about the architecture of uh, aharon then they started building the mosque uh, according to the uh, features of the arabian architecture uh, otherwise it was still that time it was the minds of the people and what they could understand they made the mosque so you can't find the dome over here next thing what they have mentioned over here is the style which originated from this king mansa musa which you can see below over here he was said to be a filthy filthy rich person of that time and uh, the money and the gold which he had in his possession uh, if we calculate it in present times then it is 400 billion dollars so by this you can understand how rich this person was okay so moving on uh, this mansa musa he went for pilgrimage to mecca and from there he brought an architect who could design the mosque the way actually it should be in arabesque style let's let us just see if we talk about the african continent and we talk about the islamic civilization in africa and if we don't mention about mansa musa obviously it is incomplete so mansa musa ruled mali between around 1312 to 1337 he was a nephew of mari jata or so sunjata the legendary king who established the kingdom of mali Mansa Musa was famous for his long caravan expeditions that is the long travels which he took from african region across the sahara to cairo that is in egypt where he took with him large amount of gold since he was a filthy rich wealthiest person of those times so obviously he had large amounts of gold which he carried from the rich gold the mines or the fields of west africa now when he went to cairo and he was a person who was very spent thrift so he spent so much of gold over there buying the things over there that the value of gold fell throughout egypt when you have more of anything then the value decreases if you have less of anything the price value of that commodity increases it could be as a daily product as a, a butter or it could be onions so if there is a scarcity of onions then the price will rise and if there is too much of it then obviously you will get it at a very cheaper price so same goes for this gold also although it was a precious metal but this person had it in so much of abundance and he was a spent thrift who just generously just spent the gold that brought about the value of gold of uh, a fall in egypt uh, let us have a look in to the library in timbuktu the library of arab uh, arabic manuscript which you can see in on this slide Timbuktu shows how its cultural heritage has been connected to the Arab Muslim world. Exhibits show evidence that means the exhibits over there on a display bear evidence they bear a proof of the visits of the Muslim scholars traveling across the Sahara Desert region coming into this region of Timbuktu and this was the time since at least the 14th century. so you find the muslim scholars traveling all the way coming into this region of timbuktu and what bears witness of it is the manuscripts next is one of the famous visitors was the traveler ibn batuta 
and he wrote about his visit to the cities and what did he find over there you can find when you go through the accounts of this ibn Battuta you will definitely find the reference of the library of Timbuktu here comes activity 2 uh, they have given you the question and they are asking you to just pick the correct uh, quest answer from there it is in the form of MCQs so I have picked it you can just check it out now let us see the Jenny that is this particular region of Jenny Jenny has been occupied since 250 BCE that means 250 years before the birth of Christ this region of Jenny was populated occupied for human habitation and became a market center along the trans-saharan gold trade routes of the 13th to 14th century that means that the traders and the merchants they used to pass through this city and if they have to obviously go into the other region of the sahara they passed they passed through the city of jenny its traditional mud houses and its large mosque make use of the local materials of mud from the nearby river now this is not something uh, which is quite unique from time unknown man man has been making the houses and the different structures from this material which is available in his environment so over here but the special thing over here is that that you can still find it standing uh, with full glory and the mud houses and these large mosques which are made up of uh, bricks of mud and it is also been plastered by mud which you find that mud a clay kind of mud in the uh, river uh, besides the river and each year these traditional mosques are refreshed with the fresh plasters from that uh, river banks uh, with the community effort that means the people of that region they are the uh, people who bring about this uh, renovation of the mosque every year Uh, here comes activity 3 you can see the activity wherein you have the fill ups being given in your textbook you just have to write down the answers what I have put I have written it down in bold you can see it for yourself those are the answers for the fill ups now here comes activity 5 and 6 uh, they are both on the same slide you can go through you can check the answers you can add some more points of your own for the plenary you have these questions I hope you'll be able to answer them well and the last question especially which is your fifth question over here is an application based question Africa has rich reserves of precious diamonds and gold still it is the poorest continent in terms of the standard of living of the people so analyze so i want you to go on the google and do a little bit of uh, uh, research over there and find out that why is the condition of the people so pathetic over there why are they leading such a miserable lives when you see the videos you get so moved by it the children eating the mud cakes and that really makes one feel so disturbed so this is a thing to ponder about so please go through this application based question and try answering it. So finally I come to the end of my video. Thank you so much for watching it. And uh, if you have really liked it then please give me a thumbs up. Please do share it with your friends, with your relatives, with all the people around you. So that they could get benefited by the videos which I make. And if you haven't subscribed, then please, please do subscribe to my channel. Take very good care of yourself. See you next time with my some new videos. Till then, bye-bye.